Evolutionary that word podcast coming away episode four zero one Q and A. Steve Smee here in the Rickster. How you doing, man? Hey, what's up, Steve? What's up, guys? How's everybody doing out there? So we got a lifestyle episode Q and A. These are all lifestyle questions, guys, and it's gonna be a cool one. So um, it's probably gonna be a long one. So let's get on it right now. The first one is: Would you go on TRT at forty years old if your test levels were in the four hundreds? So I had this. I had a client I talked today about this and I, um, you know, I asked them permission. I'm like, dude, you know, you mean to talk about this on the, you, know, you want me to talk about this on the podcast? And he's like, yeah, talk about it on the podcast. So I wanted to talk a little bit about it on the podcast because a lot of you younger guys are going to go through this. And a lot of you guys who are now in your early forties or mid forties, you have this situation. So a client of mine, he was on his way to the doctor and he called me, it was an emergency. And he's like, See, I'm on my doctor. What blood work do I need to get? Because I want to try to get on TRT. I'm going to my regular general practitioner. So I asked someone, I was like, I was like, well, you know, what blood work do you have now? So he sent me my, his blood work. All the doctor had uh, got him before were a couple things and total testosterone. So I told him, like, dude, first of all, you need to know where your LH is. You need to know where your FSH is. And he's like, okay, what are those? I said, those are hormones that your pituitary glands produce. So I told him, look, if your LH and FSH are high, you know, mid-level, high level, and your total testosterone is, say, 400, like his was, that would tell me, that would be an indicator that your pituitary glands are functioning really well, but your lytic cells, which are your testes, which are your balls, are not spitting out testosterone the way they should, even though they're getting signaled to spit them out. So I would tell, you know, in that situation, Hey, it's a testes issue that can be improved. And usually that's a really simple fix. Usually you can just get, get on some herbals, get on um, Rick's product and to generate and to generate ES extra strength. Those contain herbals in them. And those herbals will help your testes start pumping out more testosterone because they're already being fed a lot of LH and FSH, but they're just not functioning well. On the flip side though, if your LH and FSH are lower, you know, low mid range and your testosterone is at 400, that tells me your pituitary glands just aren't spitting out hormones as much as they used to be. And that could be just due to lifestyle changes. That could be just to getting older. That can be from steroid abuse. Maybe you took steroids before when you were younger and it's catching up to you now. So in that situation, um, herbals can help, but they're not going to help as much as they would if it was more of a testes issue. So in that situation, you know, you would actually know, hey, my pituitary glands aren't firing off as well as they should be. So those are the two things. So those are the two scenarios you guys should be looking for when you get your blood work done. But this is what I told my client. I told him, look, if you decide to go on TRT, it's not hard to get on TRT. Even if your levels are 400, it is not hard. I mean, doctors nowadays, it's way too easy to get TRT. Five years ago, 10 years ago, it was much more harder. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it was extremely hard. But now it's easy as hell. All you got to do is find a a doctor who is aggressive and they're going to put you on TRT. They want to make you happy. They want to get more clients, et cetera. But I told them, I was like, if you make that decision, you're going to be half, you're going to have to inject testosterone in your ass for the rest of your life once a week. And is that something you want to do? And he's like, no, it's not. And I'm like, then you shouldn't do it. So it really, guys, it's your body. You guys have to make a decision. All I ask is, you know, all the facts, you know, what's going on in your body. And then you make a decision between you and your doctor that is in your best interest because your doctor is someone who is supposed to have your best interest, guys. But, you know, we have a healthcare system that is for profit. So at the end of the day, they're thinking more, you know, a little bit, you know, I want to send Timmy to private school. I want to buy, uh, you know, an extra thing for my yacht. I want to, um, you know, buy a new Mercedes. They're thinking in their head a little bit more 
on the money front. And if you go to an anti-aging clinic, that's all they care about is getting as much money as you can from them. So my client, basically the, and the, and the, the, the doctor has suggested he go on some peptides and go on TRT. So I told him, look, peptides, completely not necessary. Um, if you're taking some growth hormone peptides, look, they're going to help boost your sleep. You're going to sleep harder and they're going to help with your appetite. They're not going to do much else for you in the short term. If you use them for months and months and months, they could help burn some fat, but initially it's not going to help you the first couple of months. So at the end of the day, guys, you have to be making this decision. You have to find a doctor that cares about your health, not just his pocketbook. And you have to decide in the end, do I want to inject testosterone for the rest of my life? So that's a big decision to make, guys. Rick, give your thoughts on this. You could go to one of these TRT clinics with your testosterone level sky high and tell the doctor, say, hey, doc, I've been injecting myself. And I don't want to do that anymore. My testosterone levels are going to crash. Would you prescribe me some testosterone to help keep me a soft landing so my levels don't crash? And uh, they will. They will. You'll never have to provide a low testosterone test. So the game has changed for sure. For sure has changed in the last decade or so. Look, I I make an herbal product. You guys know what, what I think. I think you should be using these herbals, you should be, think of it as adding something to your diet. You know, if, if I didn't put these herbs, these concentrates in a pill for you, you'd be grabbing these herbs and making a tea out of them and, and drinking them or just chopping them up and adding them to your food. It's kind of like you're changing something in your diet in order to get an effect that you're, that you're desiring. So hcgenerate.com. Obviously, I think you should give the herbals a try. The asparic acid, just really give it a try before you, like Steve said, basically condemn yourself to having to shoot a synthetic steroid into your body a couple of times a month just to feel right. If you definitely can't get your body moving again, you can't get your levels up again, using some of these natural herbs, then, you know, definitely, I guess you got to go for the synthetics. But if you can add something from nature that can help you move things along, that can help you get better on its own, why not? Why not give that a shot, right? So, guys, I believe in my product. It's been on the market now, going on a decade. It's a great product. A lot of people enjoy it. A lot of guys come back for it cycle after cycle. Please check it out. Support our podcast when you when you use the product hcgenerate.com check it out and uh yeah like i was saying and look man if you don't want to use my product and you want a, a lead on a good trt clinic come out and ask me i might tell you what's a good clinic or, or, or not you know depending uh who uh who i know at the time so rickyvrock.com you'll find my social that way r i c k y v as in victory R-O-C-K dot com. Come and ask me about a TOT clinic. Say, I, I don't want the herbals, Rick. I, I want to shoot testosterone the rest of my life. You know a good TOT clinic I could go to. I might know someone. Who knows? We'll see. But uh, yeah, that's it, guys. What, what, else? What, what, what else we got, Steve, today? So this one's for you. This is a special one for you, Rick. How do I increase libido with steroids? This kind of uh, piggybacks on the first topic. Okay, so this is one of the kind of questions that I dislike. Uh, listen, guys, libido, it's a lot more to do with it than just hormones and testosterone levels, man. Mm -hmm. Libido ha has a lot of different things. I could shit. If I tell you guys one of my stories with these fitness girls, I could increase your libido right now just listening to this podcast, <laughs> you know? So it's it, libido is very psychological, you know? To quote uh, Nelson Montana, your your guy, uh, Steve, to quote Nelson Montana, Rick, if you want to improve your libido, get yourself a 21-year-old girlfriend. It's very mental, man. Don't blame it on the steroids. Sometimes you might have erectile dysfunction problems because you just hate that bitch. You know, it just happens, bro. You know what I mean? So sometimes you, 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 you're stressed out over other things. Sometimes life is just kind of, you know, fucking with you a little bit. 
don't blame it all on the juice. Make sure everything else is in order. Make sure everything else is fine before you you go in and start pointing the finger at the juice. Or think that you need the steroids to improve your libido. You might not. You know, maybe you just you know maybe you need her to like sometimes learn to just shut the fuck up, and then you'll be like up more for the game at night. Like you just there's a lot of factors that go into it, so you have to be very aware and don't don't always look at the juice as the is the source of your problems and your solutions when it comes to, to libido. What, what else you got? Steve? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in, in my client that I talked to today, he had mentioned libido. He, he wanted to boost his libido a little bit. And I told him like, like, dude, listen, boosting your libido. It's not really about, you know, you, you get probably an initial, what end up happening is you get those that rush of androgens and you're like, wow, you feel like you're a teenager again. Because when you're a teenager, you felt a certain way. Your hormones were changing. You had those androgens for the first time in your life. And you're like, whoa, I feel horny like all the fucking time. Like, what the fuck is wrong with me? And you're going fucking crazy because you can't get laid, you know, unless you were like, uh, you know, in high school, usually – the girls in high school like to date the guys who are like older in college. So in high school, it's harder to get laid. But then when you get older, it's easy to get laid. It's like, you know, women are the ones that are coming after you. <laughs> like the, the, the tables turn a little bit. So you feel that way. You get those androgens going. But over time, that kind of levels off. You get used to those androgens. So it's really not a recipe to, to increase your libido. It's not, it's not a good idea. There's there's definitely detriments to having that type of effect because you got nowhere to go. So at the end of the day, a lot of it is definitely uh, mental. And look, you know, some guys are just not, you know, some guys just don't have it. You know, you might not just be someone who has a strong libido and that's something that's okay. You know, some people do, some people don't, and it's not all about, you know, you don't have to believe the bullshit, you know, you don't have to watch a movie and, and see how things are in movies and think that's how it's supposed to be in real life. Because in real life, we have stress, stressed out lives, we don't have time, we really don't have time to spend with our partner to really dedicate, you know, time our partner, really what you have to do in a relationship or a marriage is you have to spend, you have to dedicate a couple hours a week just to each other. With no distractions, no phones, no computers, no nothing, no TV, nothing, where you guys can just spend time together. That's what you have to do. Because if you get in the habit of not making time for each other, then it, that it becomes five days, then it becomes a week, then it becomes two weeks, it becomes a month, it becomes two months. And then pretty soon after a year, you're in a marriage where you've only had sex like two or three times. And that happens all the time with people. You know, because you don't make time for each other and you're like, you lose that interest. It gets stale, it gets boring. So, you know, that's, that's how it is. So no, it's not going to magically fix. You're not going to create time by taking steroids, right? So if that's your problem that you're not spending enough time together, you're not going to fix it by taking steroids. A big problem in relationships is that the woman works full time. The man works full time. She might work a certain schedule where it doesn't match. You know, I've dated bartenders. I've dated nurses. I've dated teachers. I've dated different professions. And Scrippers. You dated scrippers, too, you told us on the show. Yeah, once. Once. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, in her, in her schedule, she was, you know, traveling a lot and stuff. And she was in that industry. But if your schedules don't match, it's going to destroy your relationship. And, but that's, that's modern living guys. I mean, that's modern living. Like that's how it is. Unless you, you want to, you know, have a, you start dating someone you're like, Hey, just quit your job. And then you can spend all your time dedicated to me. You can be my, uh, whatever it's called. My uh, Malibu Barbie. Hey, I'll give you guys a tip. Okay. We're all about like, tips here. I'll give you a tip, right? About libido. Libido is a mindset. All right. So like when you think about being with her, 
like really think about going over there and you know splitting that pussy open really tearing it up doing a good job like everything and if you built yourself up in your head like all right we, we're gonna take care of this you know, we're gonna smash this we're gonna make her feel good you know we, we we're gonna make her sorry she woke the, she woke the monster you know what i mean like really like do it, you know what I mean? And then you'll get up for the game. It's just like like doing that last rep, doing that last set. It's like pedaling up that hill. You know, it's like busting out of that submission, slapping your own. It's, it's a mindset too. So if you sit there, you know, looking at it, saying, hey, you know, you're going to get up, you're going to do something, you're doubting. You know, you got to be the snake charmer. You got to say, get the fuck up. We're about to go smash this. We're going to do this. You know, and and... And have that mindset. It'll it'll come to you, man. Libido's so psychological, man. Look, they're they're guys that have low testosterone levels. Dick is ready to go every day. They're guys with like on tons of juice, high levels of androgens, can't get a fucking woody. And a lot of times it's just it's all in your head. So have that mindset. You know, just know, like, have a mindset to be up for the game. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> to do the damn thing, split that pussy open, like really do it right. You know, get that, get it. And just, just that'll, bro, that'll go such a long way. Instead of you kind of doubting yourself or thinking, ah, ah, nah, you fucking, you get after it. Ain't that right, Steve? It's funny on a pre-show, uh, Rick was like talking about this girl's days. Like, I don't want her knowing about this podcast. I don't think uh, if, if you're dating a girl, you want her listening to that past minute yeah that's I, I try to stick to the ones that don't speak any english but yeah or you I mean, can just tell them what i do just be like hey this is my <laughs> character it's a character it's not really a person and my the guy who runs the show the director makes me do this character this obnoxious character so please don't hold it against me well that that is the truth we're just playing two characters it's not none of it none of this is really real i've never taken any steroids we're just playing around so See speaking so speaking of that, this leads us into the next question. This leads us to the next question. Do you hide your steroid use from relatives? So you tell me you you have a lot of relatives, right? Do you, do they know about nothing, your steroid use? Nothing from nobody, man. Don't huh? Hide, don't hide nothing from nobody. I'm the guy in the family that people ask when they have some kind of pain or some kind of something they can't kind of figure out. Like I'll just sit there on the phone and ask away until until we, we until they can go to their doctor with something and say, "Hey, doc, this, we should check this out." Now people know me. People know I. People know all about me. I don't. I don't hide it from anybody. I don't hide anything, man. Just shit. I don't fucking hide it from all these people <laughs> <laughs> listening to the podcast and on the forums. You know, so it's just silly. I don't. I don't hide. I don't hide anything from no one. What about if you're like 25 years old? Do you think you should hide it? When I was a young man, your parents young man is a different story. But now I'm like 40. I'm like, you know, people know like. So what what advice would you give for a 25 year old who's using steroids? And you know, do you think he should tell his parents? Because at that age, you're still kind of like still a baby in your parents' eyes, and they'll worry about you if you're using steroids. Just whatever, man. Worry about working. Worry about becoming a good contributor to society about coming up in the game, making your own money, and just what you let people know as time goes along. Look, if you're successful and you're a good dude, then nobody can tell you nothing. But if you're, like, getting in trouble, getting into fights, getting arrested, having, like, DUEs, like, you you know, you, you just, you're just an asshole, then, yeah, like, of course you got to hide all that stuff from people and you got to, you know, because then your parents are going to say, well, that's the problem. Tommy's been injecting testosterone. That's why he's a fucking asshole. That's why he's, you know, he's punching people, getting in trouble, right? But if you feel about your, your shit, if you're not a troublemaker, if you're a contributing member of society, if you're doing the right things, then just whatever. If they find out, they find out. You don't have to put it in their face. And if they ask, you're like, hey, you know, I do or I don't, whatever. You know, as long as you're doing the right things. And nobody can say shit. That, that, look, any, any of you guys out there in your 20s, as long as you're not calling people to help you with shit, like you, you handle your own shit, you handle your own stuff. Mom, dad, they're, you, they're, you help them. They don't, they don't have to come help you with nada. Not coming up, picking you up from the station or <laughs> fucking court or, you know, dealing with your baby mamas. Like as long as you're not bringing trouble to people's lives, man, 
and you're someone that people can look up to like, oh, that's a good kid. It's a good dude. Then nobody can tell you nada. You know what I mean? But if you got all these other problems, then look, I'm going to tell you not to fucking do any steroids. You got cases. You're going to court, battery, like you're, you're drinking, uh, you know, you're doing, you're, you're, you're an asshole. Then I'm going to tell you not to fucking do it. So it, you know what I mean, Steve? What do you think, Steve? What you're saying is, is, you know, it's exactly, exactly the case. Like, because if you're, you know, you're doing these podcasts, you're writing, you're, you're on these forums and you're contributing to, you know, you're helping other people and stuff. So how can they say anything to you? So the people, you know, that I mean, I'm an activist really, when it comes down to it, I'm helping people. I'm you look, they might come down on me for, for spreading these ideas one day. Who fucking knows, you know, one day the, you know, the, the, the tofu eating millennials will come get at me for, for talking about the wonders of, of andro- high androgen levels. Who fucking knows? But I'm, I'm here. I'm doing it. It's, it's the place where God put me in the world and, you know, whatever comes down the pipeline, that's it. You know, I'm, I'm in this. This, this is going to be my life. That's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look, when, when they put me in the ground, if they test my test levels, my shit, my testosterone levels would be high. I'll tell you that. This is just, this is just my lifestyle. It's, it's something that I, and look, and people around me know, they know how, how washed up and tired 40 year olds tend to be. They see me fucking tight, got energy doing things, you know? So people kind of know, like I got a little, got a little secret in the fountain of youth. I kind of do. So it's, it's no way to hide it really when it comes down to it, man. If you, if you, like Rick said, if you can build up self-respect, then people will respect you within your family. They won't fuck with you. But if you're a lost cause, then they're going to be like, you know, they, hey, this guy, you know, he's using steroids. He's doing cocaine. He's doing heroin. He's smoking pot. He's doing all this other shit, doing these wreck drugs, drinking alcohol. Okay. And they're going to be like, hey, this guy's just the fuck up. So, I mean, you've got to know the difference because like Rick said, like if I had a relative who was a fuck up and then they came to me and they wanted to do steroids, I would tell them, no, I'm not going to help you do steroids. You shouldn't do steroids until you get your shit together. You shouldn't do them. So if you live the lifestyle you live the life, then they can't tell you anything. They can't because then they, they'd be the hypocrites. So at the end of the day, like, yeah, that's how it is. Um, even with your wife, even with your old lady, you know, if you're that guy who she's like still baby and still having to finish raise and you got all these issues and all this shit, of course, she's going to have more to say and be more involved if you want to use steroids or not. But if you're that guy that handles shit at work, takes care of business at work, come home and helps her and never unloads bullshit ass baby problems on her, but you're fucking solid were you even a little bit of a mystery? She don't know everything that goes on with you at work. Like, cause you don't, you don't go home and cry to her. She's not your fucking, you don't cry to her. She ain't your therapist. She'll lose respect for you. Even if she is your wife. Okay. So if you're that guy where you, you handle shit, come home, help her with her, with her stuff. And you still got a little bit of that mystery, a little bit of room for yourself. Like you do whatever you want. She knows you got to handle it. It's only when you're one of these like baby husbands, you know, like a kid husband that she's going to have something to say because you fucked this up and you had fucked that up. And you remember when you did this, then you you've lost all power in that situation. You've lost like the ability to make your own decisions because you a man child. So that even even with your mate, that that plays a, a, a big role, too. What did you say, Steve? The younger women are okay with that it seems but once the women get older and they've been through all those man child children they don't want especially girl girls who have kids themselves i think or have had been divorced they they're gonna run away from man children so um there's a um scene from the godfather part two i know rick you don't watch movies but he had lost his job in part two he, they were living in new york they were immigrants um 
you know, Robert De Niro was the godfather. I don't know if you remember that scene. He had lost his job because the mafia guy wanted the owner of the little bakery to hire his nephew. So the nephew stole his job. So he got fired. He goes home and he sits at the dinner table with his wife, smiling and happy. He doesn't come home and be like, oh, honey, he's crying like a little bitch. And, oh, honey, I lost my job, blah, blah, blah. He didn't say a damn thing to her. He gave her a kiss. He sat down for dinner. They ate dinner together, smiling, happy, you know, and he bounced back and he ended up, you know, being a, a very powerful man, you know? So at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's, you gotta have that attitude guys. And you really do. And that shit can work for you when you're 20, 25, maybe even 30, you're dating all these dumb young women are not calling women dumb i'm saying everyone's dumb in their 20s whether you're a woman or a man that's why i don't date 20 somethings but you know once you get in your 30s and your 40s and you start wanting to date women women aren't going to put up with that shit anymore women smart women get smarter quicker than men women are like five or ten years ahead of men when it comes to this shit so if you're dating women in their 40s, they're going to have a different mentality than dating women in their 20s. So in their 20s, they're still chasing the bad boy. They're still chasing the loser. But in their 40s, they've had enough of the bad boys and losers. They want a guy who's got his shit together. You can, they still want an edgy guy. They still want a guy who has a lot of action. They still want a guy who's not boring. But they want a guy who has his shit together, who is not boring at the same time. So, you know. I think I gave you guys a secret to uh, to tapping into into just having access to beautiful, gorgeous women. So many, I think I gave the, the secret before, right? Secret is uh, learn Spanish. Just learn Spanish, second language, and you're fucking set. Just opened up a whole new world of available, gorgeous women you can talk to, meet, date. Learn Spanish. Do that. I'm telling you, it'll 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 get you a long way. I think there's nothing cooler than seeing like a white dude speaking Spanish. I think if you're just like, fluent, oh, they love it. Oh, they, oh, but, hilarious. Oh, oh, these women love it. If you're like, then they're like, holy shit, this if guy you're American, but you're cool. just fluent enough to like, to like get around, oh, they love it, dude. And you'll learn, and listen, you wanna, if you just learn enough to get yourself a, a good uh, Spanish senorita, oh, she'll teach you the rest, bro. You'll be, you'll be good. All right. The next one is, do you think most people regret steroid use? So Rick, this is one is most for you because you use steroids for the first time at a very young age. So kind of talk us through that. I, I think, yeah, the majority of people, a lot of guys quit after their first cycle, uh, after just touching it for a couple of weeks. I, you'd be surprised, but I think the majority of people that use steroids have quit after just a couple of weeks and, and never done it again. So I think so. And even us that have been doing it for many, many years, we've got a bunch of regrets as well uh, about how early we started, about how much uh, higher dosing we did, we did early on unnecessarily. So I think, it, I think uh, unfortunately, regret is, is a little bit of, a, I'd say it's part of kind of what comes with, with the territory. Cycles where you got sent bunk stuff, money that you got taken for thousands sometimes over the years builds up. In fake product and product that was never shipped, never delivered. Uh, there is a lot, a lot of, uh, there's just a lot of, unfortunately, it's, it's an underground market. There's always going to be some regret and some issues that come with that. And it's just, yeah, of course, we've all got some. I, I'd say the majority of, I'd say 99%. I'm just going to toss that out there. Out of 100 steroid users, 99, we have some sort of regrets about something to do with, with the use and the lifestyle. I, you know, when, uh, it's, I don't regret when I started using them. I started using them in my late twenties, but I regret um, listening to the wrong people. There wasn't anyone really to give me the kind of knowledge that I'm giving you guys on this forum right now. I mean, on this uh, podcast right now and on the forum. Um, because what happened was when I do something, I do it a, a thousand percent. I'm like type A personality and everything. So um, I went too aggressive when it came to steroid use, too abusive, lifting too heavy, and it resulted in some injuries. You know, unfortunately, um, you know, the injuries I sustained 
prevents me from lifting heavy. And um, if I would have just taken things a little slower, I would be way ahead of where I am now. Be, be, and it's because I regret, you know, uh, how aggressive I was with my steroid use, specifically running trend. And I've talked about this on prior, prior podcasts, because when you run trend, it's a whole different animal. And um, I ran trend cycles, you know, of course I cycled off because after eight weeks on trend, it's brutal. So I came off, I'd come off eight weeks, come off for like 15 weeks and go back on then come off for 10 or 15 weeks, then go back on. I did that for like two or three years where I was cycling trend on and off. And during that time I got so strong, but the amount of weight I was doing, my body just couldn't handle it. And uh, I resulted in a three herniated discs, minimum of three herniated discs. And I also have a shoulder tear that I sustained. So, and, you know, with a shoulder tear, like I was doing pushups, um, couple days ago, I was doing a lot of pushups. I was doing some burpees and pushups and I could feel my shoulder still hurts me to this day, guys. So when I bench, you know, I'm unable to go heavy like I used to. I mean, I used to do three reps for uh, three, three uh, plates on the bench for reps. I would do two plates on the military for reps, you know, no problem. And it sucks, man. And I can't do that anymore. I can't go heavy. I can't even attempt to do a military press because I'm worried that I'll re-tear my shoulder again. And um, it gives me some tenderness and it gives me some pain. So um, unfortunately, yeah, that's where I regret it. I wish I had listened to the right people and not been so aggressive, but you know, that's how it goes. So that's why I try to teach you guys. Um, don't be so aggressive when you're running steroids you know um you're gonna get stronger you're pushing your at you're pushing hard in the gym good for you you're getting stronger don't overdo it you gotta back off you know the amount of weight i was doing was obnoxiously heavy obnoxiously heavy and uh you know i should have backed off i should not have let the trend run my workouts you gotta run your workouts you know, intelligently from your brain, not letting the trend do it. All right, guys. So the final one we're going to talk about, Rick, is do girls notice you on steroids when you are dating? So Rick has an interesting story I think he wants to share. But let me, let me give my opinion on this. Um, I, I swear I've been, um, when I've been dating women and I've been in situations where things were going great, I was on cycle. And then when I came off cycle, things changed. They suddenly were less attracted to me. And, you know, a couple of reasons for that. It could be just that sense. They can smell that testosterone and those androgens on you. Women are very, very good at that. And I think when they smell it on you, it makes them attracted to you. And then when you come off steroids, you're in PCT, your testosterone levels drop. I think they can sense that too. They sense something changing. They sense maybe they're not as attracted to you you know, and I, I really think it makes a difference. I really do. So if you're going to get back into the dating scene and you go on steroids, that can actually help you on a date that can help attract a girl to you. I swear it works. So, you know, that's my opinion on it guys. And I'm sure you know, there's, there's a whole, you know, there's a whole uh, thing about pheromones and guys who talk about pheromones, mixing them in colognes, quote unquote, getting hits. Uh, going places, um, stacking them, like just how, just how you and I, like we were on the forums and we talk about like stacking testosterone with trambolone and Diana, or whatever they, their guys on forums talk about like stacking different pheromones together to create different effects. Like it's, I've heard of this, it's pretty involved. And I guess if you have high levels of hormones, you might be making right could be if this is the case making these pheromones on, on putting them out into into the, the vicinity of when women are near near you what do you think steve um patty stanger i don't know do you know who that is rick no not of the she's a dating guru and she's um i've read all her books guys i mean you gotta read books on this stuff but she says in her book she she has several studies on this there are chemicals that get put out 
in the like if you're at the gym and a woman is working out she's putting out a chemical that makes you more attracted to her have you guys noticed that that you're attracted to women when they're on the gym and all sweaty that is true on the flip side is men also we put out these chemicals as well to make women attracted to us and it could be you know after sex it could be from using you know these hormones etc cetera, etc cetera. so yes it is absolutely true um, and that's how it is. I mean, have you ever been outside and have you, you're, you know, having something for, you know, for your meal and you have some honey, you put some honey on it and then a bee shows up. Have you ever had that happen? Because that bee is attracted to the honey. That's, that's the bee's food. It wants to check out that honey. It's, it's hungry. You know, it's checking out that honey. the same thing. Things in the world attract animals. They put out these signals to mate. It's the same thing. So it's almost like you're putting out these signals to me. So it is, I, I really, I really believe it is true. So finish up with that, Rick. And you want to share a story to finish up the show? Um, I don't know if I want to share all that story, but our pheromones are, are like hormonal attraction. Is that real? I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. I think, I think steroids could maybe make you a bit more confident and then confidence uh, gives you a bit of a different swag about yourself. So I think that, I think that helps. I think, I don't know if there's a smell that you're emitting that's somehow uh, uh, making women notice you or make, making them like you more or less. I, I don't, again, there are a bunch of guys that would disagree with me. You might be listening to this right now, splashing on pheromone cologne going, Rick, you know what the fuck you're talking about? But I do know, for example, that there's certain things and small things that you do that can actually make you seem very alpha. Uh, look, a quick example is like economy of motion. Steve was talking about the Godfather, right? If you notice a lot of these movies, the, the character, the Godfather, the guy who's running shit, who's got everything handled, he moves very smoothly. It's not very, he's not jittery or jerky. He's economy of motion, very sure of himself. Even just down to you just slowing down your motion a little bit, be more sure of yourself, Godfather style. That alone could emit an air of, of alpha, of power, of you just being, you know, very economy of motion. You know, if, if, uh, maybe like the Godfather is there and, and someone busts into a room, says, Godfather. You know, he's not just going to turn his head around real fast. He's going to like really slowly first kind of look and then turn his head if he thinks it's worth his time. It's kind of like, to me, you being sure of yourself and being very calm and at ease with yourself to the point where you express economy of motion. That might go a longer way to splash it all some fucking some skunky smelling stuff. I don't know, man. I don't, you know, I think... Apparently, just the little bit that I've researched about pheromones, and I don't know much, uh, the glands that humans use to make them are kind of sort of gone. But also there are they're doctors that theorize that if you lose your sense of smell for an extended period of time, that you lose libido, you lose sex drive if you lost your sense of smell. That's not something I've, I've really delved deep into and researched, but it's something that I've come across. So there could be a relation there. I know certain smells on certain females that I've liked turn me on. Uh, some women just smell naturally in a way that might turn you on. And there's some that might smell in a way that turn you off. But uh, so, I mean, there, there's something kind of there and they're not. But yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know, man. I mean, look, look, Steve. If this is really a thing where hormones and pheromones could attract the opposite sex, then, you know, we might be in the wrong business with these supplements, man. We might need to be selling these guys something they could splash on themselves. It was an episode know, of... Uh, and I'll be, I'll be the first guy to test it. Send me out with some samples into the world. It was world an episode of The I'll, Twilight Zone. I'll come Zone. back with some data. But, uh, I mean, you I don't watch know, The man. Twilight Zone? You ever watch The Twilight Zone? Uh, that, you don't that's watch black TV. and white, right? I'm not a black and white. Yeah, it's an old show from the 60s. But there was an episode where the guy went and he bought. Do, 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 do. I remember that yeah. part. Yeah, he bought a little thing from a guy, and he got it, and he went, and his 
and he was attracting women like left and right, but they were like obsessed over him. So he went back to the guy and he's like, dude, I, you know, he bought it for five bucks and he went back to the guy and he's like, dude, I need an antidote for this. I can't stand it anymore. This is not fun. Like women are throwing themselves at me. I don't want this anymore. Like, and he's like, well, to reverse it, you got to buy this other one. It's, this is $500. So he had to buy the other one for five dollars to reverse it. So be careful what you wish for. You may not, you know, you may attract the, the, the type of women who you're not going to want to attract. See what I'm saying? That was kind of the lesson of the show. That's, that's pretty cool. I don't know. I, I mean, if pheromones were a thing, I, I, I would have, I would have probably mess with it now i think probably a decade ago i might have gotten some pheromone samples or something maybe an affiliate program i was doing i don't i just think this stuff kind of smells skunky and i like i like my colognes i i wear nice manly colognes that i i make sure to find something really nice and i'll wear that for a year or two and then i'll, I'll switch over to something else every couple of years i switch colognes you know um, every time i switch girls that i go out with i switch colognes because smells remind me of periods of my life. So I like to kind of helps me close chapters. It helps me kind of leave that, that situation, that part there. I'll switch colognes up for the next, next two years. And whenever I want to kind of change chapters, change the way I'm, I'm doing things, change the way I move, change the people I'm with, whatever. I like changing fragrances. It, I don't know. It just it helps things smell fresh. And it, and whenever I want to go back to, to remembering something, once in a while, I'll save a little splash of cologne somewhere. And then I'll, uh, if I want to remember, I'll splash it in my hand and, and I'll be able, it'll take me back to that. Like, it'll take me back to that moment or what, what I did the time that I was wearing that cologne. You know, I like it, that, that kind of stuff is pretty, um, it's pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. Pheromones, skunky smelling stuff is going to help you get women. I don't know. I think. There are a lot of other ways that you can project confidence and be noticed and be attractive that are not, yeah, we're not going to be stacking pheromones to get women, guys. Like, we, we won't, <laughs> we, we could imagine that, Steve, we do a whole podcast about stacking different, because there are different ones out there. There's like a, like a, a dozen or so different pheromones that they're, that they, they, they put it in different uh, mixtures and, and they stack them and they put like this pheromone behind the ears and then another different one on the wrists. And then another one goes on the clothing like, like, like that, Steve, like they get wicked with it. Why don't we develop something? And I, was, I, I don't want to deal with the customer support <laughs> on that. Like if I'm sitting there ever telling a guy like, so Rick, so I put the pheromone on my wrist. Should I wave right or should I wave left? I'll be like, dude, just go work out, build some muscle mass, you know, get attention that way. I don't know, man. It, it's, it's, I've seen it. I've seen guys out there. Their whole forums dedicated to pick, to be a pickup artist or to like a better in your looks. I oh, mean, I know. Yeah. I mean, more respect to them, you know, it's just different, different, uh, different story than what we're doing. All right, guys, episode 401, come on the forums. Let us know if you've noticed anything like that. Uh, that would be cool to hear, hear some stories. But, man, it, it, I've noticed it, man. I've noticed it. And um, I don't know. It could be, hey, it could have nothing to do with it. It could be just being confident or just believing it. I have no idea. But, guys, let us know. if you Just be confident. Things. Don't be hungry. You know, economy of motion. Just be, you know, just be laid back. Be very confident. Leave these women alone. Leave them the fuck alone. Like women love nothing more from you than to be left the fuck alone. Like don't bother them. Wait until they start to come to you. Then you engage them. And if they withdraw, leave them the fuck alone. Let them just let them go. Who gives a fuck. Talk to another one that you like better. You know, find another one you like better and go chat with her. But yeah, leave, leave these women the fuck alone. And just, just be real confident. Work on yourself. Work on yourself all the time. That's one thing. Like, if you're a dude and you're in between relationships or you're leaving your, you know, you're leaving your old chick or whatever it is, just work on you. If you work on you, that's like, okay, how about this? This is what you do, dudes out there. Okay, so he's single dudes out there. Here's, here's the motivation, how you, how you get it right. Go to your Instagram and look for, like, the hottest Instagram model you 
you you can think of you can come you you can come up with right and then just imagine she was outside your door right now not going to come in you're a single guy are you living alone or are you living with your parents is your spot looking tight is your house looking tight is everything where it needs to be or are you messy are you in shape are you in good shape now or do you, or do you need a couple months right so just just imagine that imagine that when you walk out that door that hot Instagram model you want, you might just bump into her. You want everything in your life to be in order, everything. You know, you want to be the most muscular and leaner you've ever been. You want to be reaching goals and getting places with your career. You shit, you want to take care of that of that tooth that's been bothering you. You want to, you want to you want to live your life as though one day you might open the door and the hot Instagram model that you really like is outside your door. Her car broke down in front of your house and she needs to come in and use the bathroom, make a couple phone calls like, her, you know, her cell phone is out of battery, whatever the fuck. Right. But that's how you have to, if you're a single guy, that's how you have to live it every single fucking day. And then it will happen one day. It will happen that you have a chance with that Instagram model. Listen, I'm talking from experience. All right. <laughs> It'll happen. It'll fucking happen, but you have to live like that guy every single day. And you might have to live like that guy every single day for a couple of years until it happens. But when it happens, you're fucking ready for it. And you're that dude. You're that guy. You know, you open the door. She's there. Oh, my car broke down. My cell phone. No battery. I need to come in. I need to use the toilet. I need to use the toilet. I need to use toilet. I need to make a couple of phone calls. Do you have something to eat? You just don't fucking know, right? So you, if you're a single dude divorce whatever you're in that situation that's your that's your mentality for 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 life and then you you'll be good everything will be all right 401 guys q a take to you guys next week have a good one have a good one steve have a good one guys Guys, this is the require leader disclaimer. We are only sharing our experience from years of steroid use. We are not doctors, and none of what we say should be regarded as medical advice. Always check with your doctor before taking any drugs or starting any training program.